What's up, freaks? This is Steve Knows, episode number five. And today we're going to talk about, ask, really asking you a question. Do you have a, about hiring and really firing? And do you have a specific, scalable hiring process? Got you on the multiple different screens, even a huge screen over here so I can see your questions, comments, and we could, we could have some interaction here. So today we're going to help you to create a step-by-step -step process for recruiting the right person for the right job and actually interviewing them and hiring them and a step-by-step -step process for that. Last week, we actually talked about recruiting. So go back and check that last episode last week. It kind of flows right into this week of actually hiring and interviewing for the right person for the job. Because if you panic and you hire the wrong person and you rush the interview process, you rush the hiring process, you're probably going to get stuck with a pile of shit just warming up a seat. And I say it all the time, I'd rather have an empty seat in the business than a pile of shit just sitting there to keep it warm. So we're gonna go through how you can mitigate those risks as much as possible and have the at least a greater percentage chance to not bring a dud on board. And if you, if you go through this process, you're gonna have a much greater chance of success. Now, before we even get into all this, I'm gonna tell you this right now. There have been times that I've gone through this whole interview process we're gonna go over. And this involves, I'll give you the quick overview, a initial phone call, kind of pre-interview. This, and then has at least four in-person interviews with at least two to three different people. Now that's a lot of touch points, that's a lot of chances for someone to fuck up, a lot of chances for someone to be inconsistent, a lot of chances for someone to show their true colors, to whatever, to, to Prove to you that they're not a good fit for your team. And I've gone through all of that before in the past. And you know what? Still ended up with a fucking pile of shit sitting in the seat. It, it, either they were good bullshitters, good actors, good interviewers, whatever it is. But it happens. So that's just like the disclaimer before this. is There's no foolproof way, especially nowadays, where people are looking for them government checks and government cheese and don't, don't want to really bust their ass and work their way up and and work work for a living, it's it's going to be easier. People are going to be more, more of a chance to slip through the cracks. But if you follow this process, it'll probably definitely increase your chances of getting the right person in the right position in the right job at the right time. And so this is Steve Says, episode number five. Steve Says is a live show on how to have a no excuses business mindset guiding you to better leadership, communication, teamwork, and problem solving so you can make more money with strategy and structure to operate to dominate on the battlefield of business. This show is really for business owners, executives, managers, and leaders, as well as their teams that are either looking to level up or struggling with, with their development, teaching, and training of their team. And where we will guide them on how to become an even, even better leaders, better communicators, better problem solvers. So they will be prepared for the battlefield of business and, and begin treating the business as if it's their own. And this is going to allow you to focus on the growth and the scale of the company, doing things that you need to be doing, like building the team, coaching the team, training the team, onboarding the team, working on overall personal and team development. That's what you need to be doing. So let, let's go right into it. And I see some comments already here on, on the Instagrams and some questions. Yes, aptitude, aptitude tests. Jeremy Mullen, aptitude tests definitely are going to be a help. And that's going to be just another hoop, if you want to call it, for them to have to jump through to show inconsistencies, especially what they're going to tell you in person, especially what they're going to tell with meeting with different people, asking similar questions, and really finding out the, the, the bullshit and seeing if they're a good fit for the team. And more importantly, for your culture, not just, just for the position, but for your specific culture. Like you see already, kind of the, maybe the, the vibe that I'm giving off, like you need to be able to mesh well with that, with the team. You need to be a good fit for the team. You might be an awesome fucking worker with tons of skill, tons of will. But if you're just not a good culture fit and it just doesn't work with you, it's not going to work. You're not going to be a good fit for the team. So let's let's get rolling here. And, and we've kind of began, like alluded to this last week. It starts with going the, the competition between skill and will. 
between passion and proficiency, between do I fucking like it and am I fucking good at it? Like those two things. I don't know why I'm doing this. It looks like, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, I would be an HR nightmare. That's why I'm just an unemployable person and need to work for myself and be an entrepreneur because I am just unemployable. I'd be a fucking HR's nightmare, but that's all good. That's why you create the team to fit your culture, fit your personality, to fit what you're looking for, to fit your attitude, like hire for that culture and attitude. Of course, they need the skills. You need to, listen, nowadays for the position that you're looking for, for the most part, there's a basic set level of skills that are going to be required to to be just an entry level, just to get in the fucking door, just the price of admission. So we're going to not even talk about those base foundation level of skills. So first off, does this person a good culture fit and do they have the skills? Now, if they have all the fucking skills in the world, but they're not a good culture fit, guess what? That person is not, should not be employable to your company if they're not a good culture fit. Doesn't mean they're a bad fucking person, but they're just not. I don't care if they're selling their ass off. And this goes, this is also a good, a good way to, to look at your current team members. Like, if someone's not a good, good culture fit, even though they're a good performer, you need to see, what, see what's going on with that. Maybe they could be coachable, but usually not. And that motherfucker's usually got to go. That's usually the way it has to go. You have to part ways. So it's skills versus culture fit. It's aptitude, as someone just said in the comments about aptitude tests. It's aptitude versus attitude. Same, same idea. However you want to think of it. However you want to look at it. Also, it's looking at their personal discipline, their habits. This is the stuff you're trying to uncover in the hiring process, in the interview process. This is what you're really trying to, to figure out and uncover. So if you have any questions, comments, put them down in, in, in below. I'm just typing a quick response to one of those comments here. All right. So again, so the, the, and this is just for a small gym in, in upstate New York, the, the suburbs outside New York City and other businesses that I have. But even let's talk, talk about that because that was just a much smaller scale, just a local a local training studio. And even for a front desk person, they'd have to go through the same hiring process. And so again, I'll, 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 we'll go with the broader version and then we'll break it down how it would go. So first would just be an interview on the phone, a phone interview, kind of a pre-qualification. If you even are worthy of an in-person meeting, if you're even qualified enough and a lot of things, there's a lot of, a lot of information and data you could pick up over that one phone call. How'd they answer the phone? How did they talk? Were they clear? Were they friendly? Were they saying, uh, what, huh? Who's this? For who? What do you want? If they're talking like that, just because they didn't know who you were, it's a little good, a little good side note to put in there, a good little indicator. I know people can get caught off guard and get a lot of bullshit calls and telemarketers and all that, but if they knew they had a, a phone call coming or they knew they put in some applications, you'd think they'd have a little more fucking professionalism and, and courtesy when they're answering the phone, when they put their, their information out there to get a job in, say, customer service or sales or marketing, and you're, that's how you're answering the phone, you didn't know who that was. Maybe that was a client. Maybe that was a, 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 someone giving you an opportunity, someone calling you for a fucking job, and you're calling it like you're half ass asleep, watching some fucking Netflix, and I'm interrupting you. It's a good sign. You may not be a culture, and probably not even a skill skill fit. Like data, this is all data. Not saying you have to cut it right then, but you're already digging yourself deep in a hole, and you better figure out a way to fucking climb out of that. So again, it's firstly first is a phone interview, pre qualifying call. Then you're getting an interview probably with a manager in person. That might be anywhere 30, 30 minutes, 45 minutes. A second interview, if you make it to the second interview, that probably will be the longest interview. That could be 60 to 90 minutes. 60 to 90 minutes for that third interview. Even if you just want a fucking front desk job, that's what it takes. A 60, a 30, a 60 to 90 minute interview. And that's already your third one. And we didn't even get much into the skills, the actual day-to-day of what the job is, is going to require of you. A lot of this stuff, and we're going to go into some examples of some questions there, some things to go over. It, it, when you're doing the hiring process, to weed out the bullshitters, to weed out the fakes, frauds, fucking phonies that are just going to waste your time and waste money. So we're going to go through all that. So that third interview might be 60 to 90 minutes. No matter what the position, like 
People think, oh, it's just a front desk person. If they're only making 15 bucks an hour, whatever it is, 18 bucks an hour at a front desk. So they don't need all those interviews as the other person. Fuck yeah, they do. That front desk position is, is, is marketing like a motherfucker. That front desk person is your, your, the first like thing that they're seeing when they're walking in your business. They are representing you in a split second. And I see a comment, appearance is important. Yes, it, it, oh, hell yeah, it is. Like you walk in and you see that person. How's that person acting? They start slouching. They're looking at you, eye contact, all this, all this good stuff, the tonality of their voice. So this needs to be discovered because that front desk person, I don't give a fuck what they're getting paid. That person is gonna be, could be responsible for you either making or losing hundreds of thousands of dollars, fucking millions of dollars with the wrong person in that seat representing you as people walk in i've even heard people call that as the the front the front instead of the front desk whatever associate as the a, a happiness coordinator now, i wouldn't go far as that in my businesses but you get the point that's what that person is like they are the ones immediately need to start changing your state and they're just sitting there looking up and glancing went to the fucking gym today in a local gym check in and the overweight person behind the counter sitting there eyes down the whole time flicking around something on the computer and I put my little fingerprint in the thing I say hey what's up how you doing they look up hey and they look up while they're doing the thing motherfucker I'm walking into your business I don't care if you're a front desk person like that's why you will be stuck in that position and not raise up from there because of that type of attitude that type of work ethic like listen if you're gonna be a front desk if you're gonna be a, a floor sweeper sweep the floors like a motherfucker like, that is how you're going to build up. You will get noticed. You are putting equity, time, and sweat, and effort, and goodwill, equity, into your, uh, your profession professionalism account that's going to eventually pay off as a force multiplier and pay dividends in the future. So all this shit matters. It all fucking matters. And that third interview about, so let's go back to that. The third interview is about 60 to 90 minutes. A lot of situational questions that we'll get into here in a second. And then if they make it to a fourth interview, now we're going into, all right, here's some of the programs they use and opening up the computer and actually diving in because they made it pretty far. Seeing some stuff, maybe throwing a keyboard in front of them if they're doing the the work like that. If they're going to be a a coach, maybe out on the floor, getting some situational type stuff, almost kind of seeing what they got, seeing the next level of their skills. Again, you already saw they needed a certain level of skills, just, just barrier of entry just the price of admission. So now you're going to go a little more into the, the details of the, the position that they're going to be having. And then the fifth interview would be with me, usually, if I was in town or if it's a business that I'm local with, then whoever's the either CEO, owner, head manager, whoever is the last decision maker would be there. So they talk to someone on the phone. They had three interviews in person and then a fourth interview with the owner CEO, manager, whatever you want to call it, which is a pretty quick one. That's 15, 30 minutes max because they made it through all those other hoops. It's like, all right, this is your final fucking piece of the gauntlet. Like you made it through this whole gauntlet and it's, it's, it's to see where you're at. And then that's at least two to three different people that did those five interviews. So you have tons of collective data and this, this decision-making on a group basis off of comparing data, comparing thoughts, comparing your gut feelings, comparing your fucking answers to the questions that you had. All this goes into it. All of this shit goes into it. Like, think about it. On the Now let's break those down. Let's go to that first, that, that phone, phone call. Like, how do they sound? How do they respond? Uh, why did they even apply? Just get in this basic stuff. Why here? Why not at another, another similar competitor or did they apply to all the competitors or specifically just you like why did they apply to your company why this position why are they good for that position what type of of experience do they have what type of availability do they have things like this seeing some of the comments here interview appointment at a difficult time uh, I don't know if you purposely put an interview at a difficult time just to make it, but yeah, there's going to be hoops for them to go through. Any time could be a difficult time. There could be, how are they going to respond to it? How are they going to deal with it? How resilient are they going to be? Are they going to figure it out? Are they going to get there early? Hell yeah. I mean, wouldn't intentionally do it. The interview has got to be according to what times work 
in, in your schedule for your own personal freedom. Like, don't go off your own schedule just to, to do that. You'll, you'll uncover the truth sooner or later, hopefully sooner rather than later. But then on that, let's go back to that first phone call. What was your gut feeling? Like, if they, and if they do well on this and you know already that, that you want to meet them again or whatever, you'll schedule their first interview. If unsure, if you're going to go forward or not for whatever reason, let them know you'll follow up within 48 hours and you figure it out and discuss it with whoever needs to discuss it. Usually you'll know right there on the spot in that first call. If there's other, some circumstances that come up that you're not sure why, then whatever. Now, interview one. Let's go to interview one in person. Well, it's really interview two, but the first in-person one. Right off the bat is have them read the core values. We had a big banner right in the entrance of our, our gym. Have them read the core values. Send them ahead of time. This is really getting to know them, getting to understand their basic skill sets and their if they're a culture fit or not. Get to know them personally. Their likability. What's your first impression of them? Will they get along with, my, with your team? Will they be a good culture fit with your clients? Will they get along with the members? Will, will they get along with you and your leadership style and your personality? And are they friendly? Are they social? Are they confident? Are they well-spoken? Or are they just mumbling and, and, and giving shitty short answers with no fucking eye contact, little bitch, limp dick, handshake? Like, these are all telling signs. Learning human nature and, and nonverbal communication and nonverbal cues will be huge, huge. If you just study that and go deeper into it, I mean, we can't go into all the details on that here on just a, a quick live video. That would be in a, a much higher level type of coaching that we'd be doing. But you should be picking up on some of those cues and learn it. Study fucking human nature and learn this stuff. Are they a good fit for, for your culture? Do they have the basic skills needed for the position? Do they have the basic people skills, the basic technical skills, whatever it is. And then just look at them. And then this first interview, as you're sitting there and think this in your fucking head, and it's kind of fucked up, but I'd be sitting there and thinking about it as I'm looking at them as they're talking. And yes, I'm listening. I'm engaged with their, with their answer. But at one point, I'm thinking in my head and ask myself this question. I'm going to draw a line in the fucking sand and say, do I want to be, or would I want to be around this fucking person every day, sometimes for four, six, eight, ten hours a day? four, five, six days a week, would I want to be around this person every fucking day? Sometimes that's all it takes, thinking that, asking that question to yourself. And then really, is this cap person capable of working for someone who's fucking obsessed like me or obsessed like the team or the team leader or the manager or, or the CEO, whoever is running that business? And that's the basic overall, I mean, there's we could go into, we would have to sit here for, a long, for a couple hours to go through all the different, like you should have a specific protocol for all these different types of questions they're going to ask. Like telling you about their previous jobs, telling about their favorite job. What did, what did they like best or worst about their previous job? What was their least favorite job? What did they think about the list of, of tasks that you sent ahead of time or questions that you asked ahead of time in maybe an email or a follow-up or on a phone call? Or how do they picture this position that they're applying for? Like, how do they position it? What are they expecting on a day-to-day -day basis for it to look like? Like, what are their expectations? Why do they want to work specifically for you in your business, in that location, in that town? Why? And then talk about the core values, of course. Then go into some other things like, what are some of the books they're reading and why? What are their favorite, what types of movies are they into and why? Because then you, you'll uncover a lot of different things that they're not only realize they're giving off subconsciously. What's the most uh, complex project or situation that they've ever had to lead? What challenges did they come across with that? When were they called upon to step up to lead when they weren't even in a leadership position and they had to just step up and make it happen? What stresses them out? Ask them, just what, stress, what stresses you out? What are they going to come up with? These are some fucking tough questions. And this is just interview number one in person, interview number two overall. And it goes along those lines. And we would have to sit here for an hour to go over step by step everything that we go in interview number one. Now, interview number two goes deeper, deeper into the personality, deeper into the culture fit, deeper into their skill sets, and deeper into their professionalism. And it would be broken down into things like understanding how they communicate how to understand them, how they think about things, how they do things, how they react to things, how they respond to things, their emotional and mental triggers and reactions. 
Like, we could go, we would have to go deep and deep and deep into this, but it's things like what motivates them in life. What are they really good at? And give me some examples. What are they not so good at or not interested in? What gives them energy? What drains their energy? Why are they leaving their current position if they're in another job? Why do they want to leave their, their, their position? Things like we're, we're going deeper. We're going deeper in this second year. This is a long one. And again, this interview here, we would have to go, just for interview number two, we would have to sit here for a good hour to really break it down on a granular base. What we're doing step by step, what's the flow? Asking things like, what's their definition of success? Uh, what, what do they think separates successful people from people who are not successful? Uh, what do they think of the core values of, of your c- company? What was their favorite core value that you had? What do they think separates successful companies from companies that are not successful? What are three habits that they have on a daily basis that makes them successful? What are three bad habits that they have? Are they going to give up this information? Are they going to be vulnerable? Are they going to be truthful? Are they going to show their fucking cards? Things like, if you were to give, give me three words to describe yourself, what would they be? And then something like, if you would give me three words that a previous boss of yours would describe you, what would they be? We could go on and on. This would be a long, that's what I told you. This is a 60 to, 60 to 90 minute. There are questions and broken down into different segments. Like those are a little more personal. Then there are sections on problem solving, sections on taking initiative, sections on planning, planning an organization, section on self-awareness, on teamwork and team building. And it's all broken down into that, those categories, the different specific questions. We can't sit here right now and go over all of them. If, if you want some more information on that, need some more help with this, just contact me. We can talk about setting up some, some additional coaching or, or, or meetings that we need for you and your team. And all right, so that takes us to interview number three. This is a little more going into specific job skills and expectations. Now, you already went over the basics of the job skills, but now we're talking about the, the, the down and dirty all their, the, the duties they're going to have, the responsibilities they're going to have, the, uh, going deeper and more serious on the high standards and expectations of working for something as, uh, such an obsessed motherfucker like you. And it's going through the order, the list of priorities, going through the checklist, going through the SOPs you have for their position, explaining how to prioritize, seeing if they understand how to prioritize. You're going more granular. Again, giving them a keyboard to show them the stuff. Throw them the pen. Throw them the damn ball. Give them the damn ball to show you how to do it. Going over whether they're doing entering contracts or payments or whatever they're going to be doing. Interacting with members walking in. Put them on the fucking spot. Hey, there's a man. Let's, let's role play. Show me what you got. I'm a new member walking in for the first time. See how they do it. Of course, they haven't been trained yet. They don't know how you want to do it, but how would they do it? Things like that. How to enter in contracts, whatever it is. Like the specifics, the down and dirty of what's expected and the high level of standards and expectations and then show a couple things you ask them to do, then do it yourself. You better be able to fucking do it yourself. Don't expect them to do it if you can't even fucking do it yourself. Don't be a fraud. Don't be a fraud. Be able to perform it, execute it with excellence. Anything you're asking them to do. Imagine this, they ask you, hey, could you show me how that's done? And you're babbling and bumbling and you're fucking looking like ass while you're doing it. Like, get your own shit together or else you don't even deserve to be in that position to interview this person in the first place. You got no right to do it. Even if you're the damn owner. Get your shit together. Get your shit together. Get your own shit in order first. Then interview number four in person, which is really interview number five overall, is just with me. And I'm just going to ask some of the similar questions, a little more straight edge, having a little fun with it sometimes. I've had people literally walk out of an interview with me, just full, totally frazzled. I've, se- I've had people in some of those other interviews, interview number two, just break down mentally, cry, had people curse you out in the interviews. How dare you ask me that type of question? All right. Can't handle the pressure. That's fine. You ain't meant for you. You ain't a bad person. You just ain't meant to fucking work here with us freaks. Get the fuck out. That's fine. It's all good. Go, you know, go, maybe that's going to fit in somewhere else. But the fourth interview is just with, with the last piece of the gauntlet, the fourth in-person interview, again, the fifth interview, is like, all right, you made it this far. And, I, and that's one of the things I ask them. Like, listen, you made it through a fucking gauntlet to get here. You, you, you're made it through the emails, went back and forth to get that first initial phone call. You made it through this interview with this person. I'll talk about the interview. You made it through this person. And I'll talk about who it is. You made it through this person. And you made it through here. How did you, make, how did you even make it through that gauntlet? And just see what they come up with. I've heard some weird, stupid shit. That I was like, 
this person's fucking whacked. And sometimes this person's whacked, and you know what? I kind of like it. You'll fit in right perfect around here. So things like that on the, on the final interview is, is kind of like that last bit of, listen, we have some ridiculous standards and expectations, and we're fucking unrealistic and unreasonable at times, and we work at such a fast pace that we need to slow down, but we we're, we're always have a, a, a sense of urgency and a tremendous attention to detail. We are fucking obsessed with making an impact. We are obsessed with transforming fucking lives. We are obsessed with making fucking money. And if you are not obsessed with any of those things, you're probably not going to be a good fit here. You still want to work here? And going along those lines and, and getting into some more personal stuff, going into that books and movies and stuff like that also, the stress and previous jobs, some uh, stuff they've already talked about, but I want to hear it myself. I want to talk about it. Some things maybe that intrigued me in their previous interviews on the, on the data and information I had when I was collaborating with the other interviewers that I want to talk to them about and ask them about. Oh, you mentioned this. Can you tell me more about that? Kind of digging fucking deeper. Digging deeper. And also giving them another chance to fuck up. Because that's what it's about. Anyway, so that's, you need to have a protocol. Think, see how specific that was? And this was just the very fast version of going through this. This literally could be an a, a, a all-day course to talk about just the interview process alone for any type of business, any type of company. So this is kind of a, a bird's eye view of it just to give you an idea of, of how detailed you need to be to make sure you have the right person in the right position doing the right type of work with the right energy, the right discipline, in the right culture, with the right skills, and to ensure you don't have a pile of shit just keeping the seat warm in your business. So if you have any questions, comments, put them down below. If you need any help with this type of stuff, you know each day of the week we have a different live show on here on the mind, the body, the business, and the family. This happens to be obviously the business show, Steve Knows. This has been Steve Knows, episode number five. Tomorrow will be Steve Says. We're working on personal development and the mind, the mindset, on a, a role model mindset. Wednesday, we do the break in the cycle. That's with the two little freak show kids. Thursday is on health, fitness, and nutrition, a live show called Steve Does, kind of just going over what works, what has worked in the real world in the last two decades that have been in the fitness industry and helping transform lives physically and fucking mentally. And then Friday is the Russian and the Freak, where we talk about blending it all together, putting it all together, the mind, the body, and the business, along with the family, especially when you're working in the family, working in the business with family members, how to fucking combine that big old jumbled mess together. And that's the Russian and the Freak live show. So this has been Steve Says, episode number five. If you have any questions, comments, put them down below, or just send me a private message if you would like to get hop on the phone and talk about different coaching available that that could possibly help you out whether it's in the business or just on the personal side with your mindset or maybe to come out to your team we also have you see here the ltd project that's a leadership and team development training where we actually come out and coach and train your entire team all across the country we're already taking bookings into the 2022 so let me know if you need any help with any of that either on a personal level an individual basis or for your entire team in your business Let's talk about it. Send me a message. I will talk to you later. And in case no one told you yet today, you are fucking awesome. No excuses.